The latest trend to destroy your future in four years. The possible origin story of someone destroying their entire school district. It's all fair to hate tattoos, but this person goes way too far. An innocent title that might make you gross out when you read it. And young man makes the mistake of sleeping with crazy. Hello, my snacks. Welcome back. My name is Jack. Some peculiar a-holes today with some peculiar twists and turns. Let's begin. Starting things off with Am I the Devil? Where a mother thinks it's best to destroy her daughter's potential future so she gets to still live like a Malibu Barbie. Am I the a-hole for liquidating my daughter's college fund to keep our dream house? I, a 50-year-old female, lost my husband four years ago. I also have a 16-year-old daughter. My late husband left me everything and told me to trust his lawyer. My husband had worked for 20 years as a doctor and did some minor investing, so I inherited over seven figures. A year later, I decided to list our home of 12 years and received an offer too good to refuse. With the inheritance as well as the influx of cash from selling the house, I decided to move my daughter and I to Malibu because we always dreamed of a home next to the beach, but my husband was exceptionally tight-fisted and called homes there money pits. And considering he was in charge of the investing, clearly his opinion is too stupid to take into consideration. We found a beautiful home by the sea. I never personally handled anything regarding buying a home before, so I did not anticipate all the extra costs beyond the sticker price. But my daughter was so excited excited, so I decided to go for it. My late husband's lawyer was furious at my decision, so I decided to stop taking his calls. I ended up signing with a money manager who said that we'd be passively earning 90% of what surgeons earned per year. But the money manager ended up tanking a lot of our investments. I took the dwindling money out and made my own investments, which made it worse. And long story short, because of all of that, I only have around 35k available to me now, not to mention our debts. That's that's right, from a seven figures to 35,000. You literally had a lawyer to help you. With the amount available to me, I am looking at only being able to pay one month of a mortgage and upkeep, and then I'm basically out of luck until my business gets clients. However, the place where we do have a significant amount of money is the fund my husband started for our daughter. With the money there, I could prevent our credit cards from being shut down and not have to worry about the mortgage for many more months. So I ended up liquidating my daughter's college fund. I told her about it today and she was furious and said she cannot believe all her dad's work is gone. She also said she won't be supporting me for retirement. Am I the a-hole for trying to fix my mistakes and trying to keep our house? What do you think people are gonna say? You're the a-hole. You decided not to listen to the lawyer. You decided to move to an extremely expensive place and you decided to trust someone's shady advice. Now you're taking away your daughter's chances of being able to go to college loan free. That money is not yours. You should be ashamed of yourself. You also have some comments like this one. Whenever I see a post of a spouse complaining about their partner having all the financial say and see people screaming, financial abuse. I can't help but chuckle because 99% of the time this is why the spouse needs to have control. Four years. It took you four years to lose everything your husband earned and your daughter's education. You poofed everything he worked so hard for her away to save a few months of your current situation. And soon enough, you'll be posting an r slash today I screwed up about how your daughter's future is ruined because you wanted to live somewhere you couldn't afford. Definitely a rather hot take on the idea of literal, you know, financial abuse between partners. But I can see where they're coming from with it all. Because as we all know, it's impossible just to, you know, work with your partner in the finances together so that you can both learn how to be in control of it. But hey, why cooperate with your partner? That's silly! It's very strongly believed you are the a-hole in this situation. There's only one comment I can find that says not the a-hole. They just believe this is more of a shameful, poor judgment. Doesn't make you an a-hole, just makes you someone who's made mistakes. Which, okay, yes, what your mistakes have caused caused you to literally just ruin your daughter's future and your own life. So I'm, hmm, I feel that still makes you the a-hole. Either way, it's rather interesting to see a real life version of the opening to Shit's Creek. John, I've been stripped of every morsel of pleasure I earned in this life. Well, how do you think I feel, Moira? Eli was family for God's sake. Leave your finances to me, said son of a bitch. Want to bet her business is an MLM? Oh, I'd put money down on that. I'd bet her daughter's college fund on that. Oh, wait. Over to Today I Screwed Up for another example of asshole parents. Today I screwed up by asking my English teacher if she liked the story I had written, which caused me to be disowned by my family. Hello, Reddit. I am an 18-year-old high school student who loves writing. Ever since I was little,
little, I had enjoyed creating stories. However, I could never stick with a story and continue writing it. Recently, I had a dream, and the dream was a wonderful idea for a story. So I had began writing, and within a week, I had a short story of the basic idea for a much larger game or book. I yearn for much needed criticism. My writing isn't great, but it's not terrible. However, I can successfully place my thoughts on paper with a few grammatical errors. So let's begin with where I screwed up. I live in a small town in Georgia of about 200 people. The town is super religious and my story was rather graphic. The story in itself was a nice love story between two male soldiers set in a post-nuclear apocalyptic setting. The story doesn't have anything not safe for work and was simply a love story that happened to be between men. But the zombies and their descriptions were very graphic. I had finished the short story and had asked my English teacher for much needed feedback. I sent it to her in a Google document and she said she would read it over the break. Well, we come back over break and my English teacher called my parents and asked for them to come in for a talk. Today, I waited after school for my parents and they came to the school to talk with my teachers. My parents are also super religious and I was afraid they would be angry due to the graphic content. My English teacher was very upset about the contents of the book. Not because of the zombies that got slaughtered, but because of the quote, ungodly relationship between the two main characters. My English teacher would go on to read the story aloud, which not only made me cringe, because who likes to actually hear their writing, but my parents grew very angry with what I thought was a sweet little love story. Four hours later, my parents have kicked me out of the house. They are accusing me of being gay, but I'm not. I just thought writing a love story between two men would be interesting because it's something I could never experience. Currently, I'm staying with a friend. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just couch hop until I can go off to college in September. On Facebook, I've become the Town Piranha. Town Piranha, hey? Especially our church group, which I rather liked. Town Piranha is an interesting turn of phrase. I meant pariah. Piranha is better. You know, it's kind of a shame to know the mindset of this person where they think they've screwed up today because of their town's blatant homophobia. I feel like if I were in their situation, I would have done my best to try and twist it to be like, no, 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 that's meant to be disturbing. That's why it's all creepy because zombies, apocalypse, men loving each other, all equally as horrifying. <laughs> but there seems to be a light at the end of this person's tunnel, which is rather ironic considering that uh, alleged light is what's shunning him out. In the comments, people are highlighting the fact that you can literally report this teacher to get fired. Highlighting the fact here that uh, you could little write a little story about this uh, to the school's uh, peoples. Mentioning how the last time a teacher tried to do this sort of thing, it resulted in a legal fight that nearly bankrupted the county school system. So you know, maybe being the town piranha wasn't a typo. Maybe it's your destiny. Just gobble up all their local funds. Of course, some people argue about the legitimacy of being able to get these people involved, not to mention how an 18-year-old kid would have the money to fight a school district, but there's the loophole about this. Our man wouldn't be suing. Just opening an investigation by the Department of Education, he doesn't need to pay for anything. And I mean, it's pretty clear he has the evidence and proof as to why an investigation is necessary. So all he's got to do is report and then sit back and relax as the department wastes money trying to find out how to deal with this and ended up just, you know, getting the teacher fired because it's far easier than having to pay money, spending years trying to find the moral high ground to the situation. See, sometimes bureaucracy can work in our favor. Now over to a story found in relationship advice. With a couple's quarrel that starts terrible, then gets better. Then you notice that, okay, th th maybe it's still terrible. I, 31-year-old male, don't like tattoos. And my soon-to-be wife, 30-year-old female, just got one in the worst possible place. As the title says, I don't like tattoos. I don't think you were special for having one. I don't think you were a deep person for getting a random Chinese character on your skin. I especially don't like those intricate big tattoos that cover a lot of skin. I just don't like them. Having said that, I have friends that have all of the above, and that's fine. It's not on my skin, it doesn't bother me, and as long as we can talk about anything else, it's all fine. Just gonna highlight that part especially, uh, okay, yep. Now let's spend the rest of the story learning why it does bother him when it's not on his skin. Enter my soon-to-be wife. We've been together for five years. She is painfully aware of my feelings but she still wanted to have a tattoo before we marry. A symbol of us to carry with her. I didn't really like the idea, but what can I really do? I love her. And what harm can a tattoo do? We talked where she should have it done. 
and the back of the wrist came as a suggestion. The shoulder, on her leg, on her back, tramp stamp, etc. She goes and has it done, and I can't be there with her because I have an important client visiting at work, and time off is impossible. She texts me during work. She tells me it's done, that she loves me. I ask for a picture of the end result, and she tells me tonight it will be a surprise. So I finally get home. She's dolled up, super tight black dress, stockings, everything for a night of fun. She tells me to go have a shower, and she will have dinner ready in the meantime. I ask to see the tattoo. She tells me later, I am frustrated, go have the shower, come back, have dinner. Then we go to the fun stuff. I didn't see the tattoo on her wrist or legs, so I think to myself it is either on her back, upper thigh, or her shoulder. I am fine with that. I undo her zipper in the back, then she returns and lets her dress down. Instant boner killer. She has a giant tattoo of my face with a willy on it. No, I'm kidding. She had the tattoo done on her chest, above her breasts. It's big and in your face. It leaks over her breasts, like on top of them. It has thick contours. Yeah, this didn't go well with me. She completely ignored my opinions. She disregarded the places where we agreed she could have it done. And it's a monstrosity of a tattoo in a place where I will always have to see if we make love or if she wears a bikini or something that has a cleavage. It is also something that is personal to me. Of all the things she mentioned the tattoo will be, she never told me about this. She said she wanted it to be a gift to me, to show me her dedication. Take note of that part, to show me her dedication. We'll come back to that later. I feel disrespected, ignored, like my wishes and desires have no meaning to her. To me, it shows what she thinks my status will be in our relationship. That she will just be able to go over anything I say and take drastic decisions without caring of the consequences. Well, a consequence of this is that I am calling off the wedding. And now she's in freakout mode, saying she thought I would like it, that she wanted to show her dedication to me, that she will have it removed, basically anything she thinks I want to hear. My side of the family is understanding of my reaction. They know my standing on this matter. They know it wasn't something just liked to pretend I hate but secretly love. But her side of the family is split. Her mother is more conservative, so her motives are not too straightforward. Her father is on my side. Her sister is all in on dear sister's side. Her brother is neutral, doesn't want to get involved. Ah, oh, what a supportive family she has. To me, even if she gets the tattoo removed, it shows her willingness to ignore my side of things, do things her way, then scramble and try to fix the eventual screw-up. I can't have that in a relationship. What do you guys think? The wedding is definitely off. That decision I won't revert. But what steps would you take regarding the relationship? Is there anything worth saving here? Is this how she will always be? Or was this a spur-of-the-moment decision? Any advice will be appreciated of. Thank you. Now, out of curiosity, what is the tattoo exactly? Wings. With a heart in the middle. Inside the heart, there is a symbol that is a birth sign I have on my body. And in case you're worried, this might be a really weird birthmark. So what, you know, maybe the birthmark looks like a scrotum. Well, apparently it looks like a flower. Think five petals. Apparently, if you saw it on him, you'd think he'd had a flower form pressed onto their skin and left a mark there. So yes, it's a weird way to dedicate yourself to your partner. But nonetheless, it clearly was a loving gesture. And I think we can all argue this man is really a controlling a-hole to hate tattoos and want to break up with someone just because they got something that, again, was also kind of for him, not really for her. But in the update four days later, you're about to learn that this controlling behavior is actually kind of mutual. And to think he's an a-hole for hating tattoos, well, he actually has a very justifiable reason for it. We will continue with the wedding as planned. We realize we still need to work on our communication, but we are also painfully aware of how miserable we both were during this whole ordeal. This has been our first serious fight. So what happened? Insecurity. She had this idea that I don't think she is dedicated to our relationship. She wanted to prove it somehow. Turns out the end result wasn't something she was happy with either. My initial reaction didn't help, and for the next few days, things spiraled out of control. After the post here on Reddit, I decided we need to sit down and put our ducks in order. I love her, and she loves me, and there was no reason why we would not be able to untangle this mess. So why do I hate tattoos? All she knew is that I am not a fan of them, but that's not the reason. When I was younger, a lot younger, I was horribly abused by someone that had many tattoos. 
tattoos. I don't associate people with tattoos with abusers, but I am also not a fan of the tattoo culture because of it. She didn't know because I never talked with her about it. I suppose I never wanted her to think I am vulnerable, or that I was. You can imagine, after these many years, my thoughts on the matter are still mixed. Anyway, she was horrified to learn about this, started crying. She will have the tattoo removed. After the original post, I have come to the conclusion that her new skin decoration is something I will have to live with, but at the end of the day, she is the one I want, and a mild annoyance will not define our relationship. I told her this, but she will get it removed anyway. I think she is horrified by the revelation. We also decided on couples counseling to see if it is something that will work for us. If either of us will be uncomfortable, we will not continue with it. We'll see how long that lasts, considering how easily this man can get uncomfortable with things. We also decided not to be a-holes to one another in petty matters. I will wear shorts again. God damn it. <laughs> that one was a funny conversation. We won't impose restrictions on one another as well. I will go out with friends and watch football with them again. She can go and meet her girlfriends. We will put a lot of work in ourselves individually and as a couple. Yes, I agree with you. This single paragraph opens a whole can of worms into what the hell has also been going on in this relationship, but we'll get back to that. Her insecurities didn't want me to go out with friends because some of them are single. And what if they bring women there that tempt me? So she always had to be there. But she doesn't like football, so you can see where this is going. I am happy with the results of the original post. She is happy I took the initiative and broke the ice. My fears where she had the tattoo done as a power play but there was no malice. I want a relationship of equals, where a decision can be made as a couple. We will see where this is going, but the last two days have been amazing. Now, I was asked this question, so here is the answer. We live together. We own a house 50-50. The night of the tattoo reveal, I went to my parents, she went to her parents. Essentially, until two days ago, none of us lived home. She said she doesn't want to be there if I am not there. Aw, codependency, how romantic. She doesn't definitely need therapy, while also being insecure about the fact that she needs to get a tattoo on herself just to get dedication from her partner. As a closing note, this could have been a huge mistake for both of us. Communication is key. I urge couples out there to learn from my story and open up to one another. Had I done that sooner, I would have never been here. Thank you. And in the comments, the last thing they ever said was mentioning an update on things over the last week for them. In regards to getting a tattoo removal, as some have alleged that it's very pricey and very difficult to actually succeed in, turns out they're in touch with someone who's also a plastic surgeon, and among with other methods, it seems like they should be able to succeed without even getting any scars. So they're both very happy about that. And further reflection together that makes them both realize that, in a way, this huge fight was the best thing for their relationship. So moral of the story, if you want to improve your relationship, do something your partner definitely won't like you doing. Back over to Am I the Devil with a story that I hope you're not eating right now. It's an Am I the A-hole story that got removed within a day. Am I the A-hole for not cleaning the shower drain cover my roommate installed since I have short hair? I'm a 22 male originally from the Middle East and I live with my roommate, 21 female, who is English. She has really long hair and sheds everywhere while I have short hair. We used to have a problem with the shower getting clogged with hair and I kept having to ask her to clean it, which she did, but she would complain about finding poop in in it as she picked out the hair. Where I grew up, it is considered unclean to use toilet paper and toilets have a handheld mini shower we call a shatafa and used to spray and clean our bums. I am not religious and this is not a religion thing. I just find the thought of smearing poop around to clean it disgusting as some of it probably adheres to the skin. So after I poop, I clean up in the shower. The only reason poop got stuck in the drain is because her hair had clogged it there. Otherwise it would have gone through. Recently, she got a drain cover to make it easier to clean. The drain cover holds her hair, but the problem is it also collects poop chunks. God. She wants both of us to clean the drain cover after use. However, I think this is unfair as the drain cover is only there because of a her shedding problem and without it or her hair there, there would be no issues. I don't see how it is fair and besides, if both of us have to clean it every time we use the shower so frequently that it would make no difference if she just did it. She didn't say anything when I explained this but she has been acting cold towards me since when we normally get along very well and do things together all the time. So tell me folks, 
the person who can't be bothered buying a $30 bidet off Amazon? Are they the a-hole for leaving it up to others to clean their own poop chunks? Some great advice in the comments. Roommate should use gloves and start collecting hairy poo balls and leave them in his bed. It's also really weird that he's trying to use his culture as some sort of shield against judging him for this. As one comment definitely highlights it here. Sure, it's true. People might not use a toilet paper to wipe in the Middle East. He could just buy a bidet. Just because something is cultural doesn't mean it's an acceptable thing. It's also kind of funny when someone tries to use the culture defense while living in a completely different country, which has a different culture. Like it's one thing for her to disrespect your Ramadan practices. It's another if your culture practices are a literal biohazard. Now over to another person screwing up. And I apologize, but we're not out of the gross woods yet. Today, I screwed up sleeping with my ex. Last week, my ex-girlfriend, 20, called and asked if I, a 22 male, was keen to continue sleeping with her. I never expected to hear from her again, let alone see her naked. Our relationship recently came to an end. I tapped out because it became clear to me that the two of us were incompatible. My ex disagreed and thought screaming at me would somehow change my opinion. Considering how upset she was during our breakup, I was surprised when I got the call from her asking to sleep together. She said she had no intention of getting back together. All she wanted was to share a bed with someone who knew her well enough to know what buttons to press to get her off. Not gonna lie, the unexpected ego boost disarmed me. A closing comment was, scratch out the friends and friends with benefits, but keep the benefits. I was willing to test it out. So last night, my ex and I reunited for the first time since the dramatic final episode of our relationship. She followed me to my room and we hooked up. I woke up this morning with one arm cuffed to my bed. My ex was gone. A random note in the pillow said the key for the handcuffs was in the condom under the pillow. I flipped the pillow and discovered the condom. A used condom, but not the condom I used. Different brand, different size, different load. I did what had to be done to get the key out of the condom and unlock the handcuffs. It was like a fear factor challenge, but all you get is some dude's nut juice on your fingers without wasting time. I disposed of the condom, the key, the cuffs, and the pillow before tossing all my sheets in the laundry and scrubbing my hands with disinfectant. But it doesn't end there. But wait, there's more. I was fuming, but I was prepared to file my experience under crazy ex-girlfriend and never communicate with her again. However, I soon realized she did more than plant another person's used condom under my pillow. She planted another person's used condom in one of my running shoes as well. The condom actually stuck to the bottom of my foot when I removed my shoe. It was disgusting. I decided to check everything. Shoes, socks, pockets, bags, etc. I managed to find another used condom in the hood of of my hoodie. I informed my roommate because I didn't know if my ex was crazy enough to hide used condoms elsewhere in our flat. He advised me to block and delete her phone number and social media, which is what I did. My roommate and I have been searching for used condoms in every corner of our flat since we got out of bed. <laughs> I have so many questions. Are all those condoms from the same person? Does that person know my ex was using safe smacks for evil? How did I not see this level of crazy during my relationship? Guess I'll never know. Straight to the comments. From now on, refer to her as planters because she likes to party with mixed nuts. Yeah, wait until she shows up pregnant to try to permanently pin you down. Never sleep with crazy. Ooh, yeah. Put used condoms in a clean bag in the freezer as evidence. Use an ice tray to keep them organized. This sounds like experienced backed advice. Place them in a pillbox so you don't eat them on the wrong day. Others dare him to double down. I'd have asked if she's up for another go. Screw with her head a bit. I would bang her a few more times in her place and also would treat her like a queen before disappearing. Emotional damage wins. Emotional damage! Or even, hey, let's see each other again. And why don't you bring your new friends? <laughs> Obviously, long story short, don't sleep with crazy. Anyway, friends, that's where we'll end today's video. Thank you as always for watching. Love your face. Have a good one. And until next time, go away. Bye.